Hi guys, it's Gospel here, the medic coach. I'm a medical doctor, a YouTuber, and also a student coach. Today I want to talk to you guys about goal setting. So let's get right. Now goal setting talks about setting an aim essentially. Most people who don't do well in school, for the most part, don't do well just because they don't have something they are going after. So goal setting has been shown to help students improve their academic performance, to boost motivation, amongst other things. Now there are characteristics that your goals must have while you're in medical school. That's why I want to tell you about and the acronym for this is SMART. The first, your goal must be specific. Now, being specific talks about, on a broader note, what do you want out of medical school? For the current level you're in now, what do you want to achieve while you're in that level? Narrowing it further down, for the different courses you have in your class, whether you're in the clinical arm of medical school or in the preclinical arm, what is your goal for all the courses? Now, you break down these courses into their various components, the theoretical exams, the MTQs, if you're in the clinicals, the clinicals, what do you want to achieve for each of these I have mentioned? For those of you in the clinicals, even if you break it further down into all the components of your clinical exams, you must have specific goals at every point in time. You break down the courses into their components as well, and you decide what do you want for each and every of all I've mentioned. So your goals must be very, very specific. There's no room for vague when it comes to setting your goals. And the second is that your goals must be measurable. Now, how do you measure? Let's say you have a goal in the next one year, I want to get into the next level. Perhaps you're in 300 level, you want to be in 400 level. So you have to break this down into quarterly plans or quarterly goals, then you bring it down to monthly and then you get it down to weekly and then you get it down to daily goals. So that's how it goes. It goes from the top of the funnel down to the tip of it. So you break the goals down and then you do a periodic review to know how well you're faring, how much you're advancing towards that your target you've set. So weekly, you should be able to do a review, let's say every weekend on Sunday to check what you've done the previous week. You must do that at the end of every month quarterly you do everything to make sure that you're on track and you're moving safely towards your desired goal or towards your desired aim the next is your goal must be achievable any goal you're setting needs to be achievable so that if you hit the targets there is that spur of motivation that comes more with it as against when you set something that is so highfalutin and you don't actually achieve achieve it it gives this ne negative feedback of energy that makes you feel as though your efforts were wasted so you want to set a goal that yes it's slightly above the upper limit for what you're giving in your school when i say upper limit for instance in some schools they still do close marking and they tell you the highest you can get is 70 marks so you might say okay i want to get an 80 in the theoretical exams a hundred is in quotes impossible that's not a goal that seems achievable but if it was for choice questions exam quite frankly you could get a hundred over hundred so you see your goal must be achievable there is just that thin line between what the upper limit is and what is going to spur you on to put in the most effort to do very well so that's for the a the next is arrow your goal must be relevant so the bigger picture you have for your medical school, let's say you want to develop a lot of leadership skills before you leave medical school, or you know in future you want to be involved in global health works and a lot of volunteering. So you want to incorporate some of these things into your goals, your monthly goals, your quarterly goals while you're in school, going for outreaches, celebrating the World Health Days, participating with non-governmental organizations and all of that. As against playing sports, every free time you have. It's not like playing sports is bad, it's not bad. But for someone who wants to, let's say, practice sports medicine, or wants to pursue a career, or maybe just does it as a hobby, it's different. But you know that medical school is very demanding, so every other time you have, you'd actually want to invest it into something that channels towards the entire picture. So volunteering, basically just count the cost, and then make sure that the nitty gritties of your daily plan align with that overall goal and the final one is your goal must be time bound a funny question how long do you want to spend in medical school if you ask a lot of persons yeah they feel they are aware let's say six years four years your training center is you get to be certain about that i'm going to be graduating at the right time barring any challenge things like covid 
things, whatever the case is, but you are going to be with with your setup. It's important for this line and you put you a lot time basically to all the goals that you're set. It's not going to exceed this particular time. Even down to your daily reading. Let's say you set a goal, you want to finish six topics today and you give yourself 10 hours. For someone who did not a lot time to that particular task. He or she might just lose track of things and then does not actually achieve the goal set for that day. So make sure that your goals are time bound. These are the things that, these are the attributes that you want your goals to have. So the next I'll talk about is the importance of setting goals. What setting goals do for you or what we call the benefits of goal setting. Number one is goals give you focus. For persons who do not set goals, they are very distracted just going about your day and someone says oh hey come let's go hang out let's go do this and then he or she just tags along that kind of person doesn't have goals but if you actually set a monthly goal a weekly goal a daily goal you'll be aware that you can't just utilize your time so is that goals allow you measure progress if you don't have a goal in the first place there'll be nothing to so by the time you have a goal you can sit back look how far you've come look how much more there is to be done and then the actions in that direction and number three is goals help you stay motivated now this is so true sometimes when i look at my planner then when i was in school that was all the energy i needed yes i have to attend a meeting i have to be in charge of this board with the leader there i need to probably engage in volleyball on Friday evenings, yet in the midst of all of this, I have a lot to do, a lot of personal reading to just, in, but just by opening that planner every day, there is this energy that comes and persons are always getting energy from, is because all my goals are spelled out. So motivation that comes with actually putting your goals down on paper. Number four, goals help you beat procrastination. Just a little bit extra still on the motivation line now it's not just about the daily motivation when i see my plans my goals for the next day i know that i don't want even one even one item on the agenda for today to spill into tomorrow because tomorrow already has a lot so that drives me and it was one of the secrets where i was able to beat procrastination most times in school it's not like i was perfect no i wasn't perfect even up till now i still get to deal with procrastination most times but the fact that i'm seeing the goal is almost like there is no space you plan for the month everywhere is choked up so where am i pushing whatever activity to there is no I must do what I need to do at that point in time. Number five, goals help you achieve more. This is the positive feedback effect. Most of the um, goals I set in school that I actually achieved gave me this drive to go for more. When you, there's a feeling that comes with achieving your goals that I really may not have the words to explain, but once you hit something, once you've tasted excellence, basically you don't want to drop from that level. You want to keep getting it. So it spurs you on to actually do more, to achieve more. It's why it's important that you must also be result oriented because a lot of persons, you know, put in energy into the academics, but at some point it feels like they're achieving little because of the discouragement that have happened over time from not reaching their goals. So be result oriented, put in your best to achieve your goals. And that would actually spur you to do more. Now, very importantly, the role of planning. If you set all the beautiful goals, all the high falutin goals, good and fine, if there is no roadmap towards how you would achieve that goal, then nothing will happen. A popular saying goes, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. So is very, very important. You want to watch out for my video on planning just at the end of this video, click on it and watch it. I will delve more into all you need to know about planning in that video. So this is all you need to know about goal setting. I hope you've learned one or two. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up and watch out for the next video. Thank you.